We're here today to hear from two champions of healthcare, Senator Peter Welch of Vermont and Representative Debbie Dingell of Michigan, and to release the fourth installment of Protect Our Care's Greed Watch report, a quarterly report that looks at the profits, revenues, and shareholder distributions through dividends and stock buybacks for the pharmaceutical companies whose drugs are currently being negotiated with Medicare so that Medicare can negotiate for lower prices for the drugs that our seniors need to stay alive. As I said, we're joined today by two historic champions of the decade long crusade to rein in outrageous drug prices. U.S. Senator Peter Welch from Vermont was a leading co-sponsor during his time in the House of the Lower Drug Costs Now Act. And when he was elected to the Senate, he stepped right in on day one to continue his leadership on this subject. And we would not have the progress we've made in the Senate without his tireless work. Representative Dingell has been a lifelong champion of health care and a true fighter for making health care a right, not a privilege in America. Representative Dingell was recently elected as chair of the House Democratic Policy and Communications Committee, where in addition to her seat on the Energy and Commerce Committee, she will have the ability to shape and drive the Democratic agenda in the House. Before turning the microphone over to our distinguished speakers, I just wanted to make a few opening remarks about our report today. Our report clearly shows that the big drug companies started off 2024 just as they have started off every other year by continuing to put profits over people. While Americans spend as much as four times more than anyone else in the world for the same medicine, in the first three months of 2024, the 10 drugs selected for Medicare's first round of negotiations brought in $16.5 billion in revenue, and the companies that manufacture those drugs raked in $25.4 billion in combined profits and spent nearly $26 billion rewarding shareholders in the form of stock buybacks and dividends. Big drug companies also increased their lobbying efforts dramatically, with their industry group, Pharma, growing its advocacy spending by 20% in Q1 2024, year over year. And most of these companies are in court today going trying to argue that the Medicare negotiation provisions in the IRA are illegal and need to be turned back. But while they tell tales of woe in media interviews in the halls of Congress and in legal briefs throughout hand-picked courts in America, it's a very different story on their investor calls where they sing a different tune and paint a bright and rosy future. One thing they don't talk about on those calls is making drugs affordable for the people who need them. And so with that uh, brief description of our report, I will now uh, turn the floor over to Senator Welch. Uh, thank you very much. And i uh, delighted to be with my friend, uh, Representative Dingell, uh, who's been an incredible champion. Uh, I worked with uh, her when we served together in the House. Uh, Leslie, let me start by just saying something we all know is true. Americans are really feeling the bite of high prices on lots of things. Uh, inflation spiked uh, after COVID. Uh, it's coming down some, but still uh, folks at the end of the month are trying to figure out how to pay for the grocery bills, uh, how to uh, pay for their health care. And one of the places where the costs have just escalated enormously and continue to do so is in prescription drugs. And that gets played out uh, with a lot of anxiety for families where they have a loved one who needs a prescription. But it also gets played out even in our uh, local school budgets where the cost of healthcare is one of the major drivers of increases in property taxes. And we're seeing that in Vermont where many, many school budgets that historically are approved with enthusiasm have been rejected. And it's because folks are feeling the a spike of high prices and healthcare is identified as one of the big areas. The biggest increasing uh, cost in healthcare is prescription drugs. And that's been going on for years. And the reason that uh, Debbie and I and others, Amy Klobuchar worked with her when I was in the house with Debbie and uh, in the Senate, 
were insistent on negotiating prices was because we appreciated that if you can't afford a really good life-saving pain relieving medication, it does you no good. Or if to afford it, you actually have to make trade-offs that are really, really so severe, uh, like cutting back on how much you eat or uh, putting off paying your fuel bill. Uh, that's just brutal on families. And the reality is, and the, uh, medic, the, the pharma people know this, that anybody in a family on a tight budget, if they have a loved one who needs a medication, that family will do anything and everything to be able to uh, pay for that so that the care of the person they love is going to get the relief they need. Uh, and that reality should not be exploited and abused by the pricing power that pharma has. And that's why this price negotiation is so important. What's really significant about your report is that even with negotiation beginning, and that's been an epic battle to get it passed, and it now is an epic legal battle, but even with that, and the benefits that it's provided for those 10 drugs that were the first to be negotiated, the capacity of pharma to make incredible profits uh, to focus on shareholder return with dividends and with stock buybacks, with executive compensation. It, like it marches on unabated. And when I talk to Vermonters and ask them, do they think it's reasonable that they pay four times the cost uh, here for a particular drug that say folks in Canada pay or in Great Britain or in France? You know, no, that makes no sense whatsoever. Pharma justifies this by saying that they come up with these life-saving and pain-relieving medications. There's truth in that. Uh, but there's also truth in the fact that taxpayers significantly contribute to the research through the NIH. It's also true that the government has provided patent protection that benefits the pharma companies for a period of exclusivity. Uh, it's also true that the government has created, in effect, a market with Medicare and Medicaid uh, for the pharma companies to sell their products. So they've got a pretty good deal going. They've got a government uh, that through employer-sponsored health care, tax incentives, through Medicare and Medicaid, sets up a, a guaranteed market. Uh, they have patent protection, courtesy of the government. They have taxpayer-funded research that they are able to monetize uh, and benefit from. And yet, despite all those extraordinary benefits, to their companies, their shareholders, they continue to rip us off with exploitive prices uh, is not conscionable. And it's not sustainable because it has ripple effects. Just the heartache that families experience when they're anxious about, can we get the medication that my husband, my son, my daughter, my wife needs, my partner needs, or school budgets where there's enormous acrimony in a, in a town where they're really at the limit of what they can afford with property taxes, but they care about their kids and they want to have that budget passed, but there's a 20% increase in health care premiums for our teachers. So you know, we've just got to keep this fight up and push back on the scare tactics, frankly, that pharma says, oh, if you do anything to interfere with our pricing power, then that is going to mean we won't innovate. No way. I mean, that's a choice they want. And essentially what they're saying, if you do anything that inhibits our ability to pay uh, enormous multi, multi, multi-million dollar salaries to our executives, if you interfere in any way with our plan for shareholder buybacks, if you interfere in any way for div the dividends, despite all the government's giving us, uh, we're not going to make drugs uh, that are going to help the American people. Uh, a, I don't believe that. And B, it's an outrageous position to take. So we've got to keep... Uh, fighting for the American people and affordable medicine and the core of affordable medicine uh, is, uh, is stopping this runaway uh, price inflation on medications that every one of us at some point or other needs. Thank you. So well said. Um, thank you. And thank you for all you do. And I'll turn it over now to Representative Engel. Thanks, Leslie. And it's really great to be here with you and the work that your organization does. But I love always being with my friend, Peter Welch, who I served with on energy and commerce when I got elected. Uh, he's been working this issue for a long time. He promised when he went to the Senate 
we would continue to partner and we do every single day and it's great to be here uh, with him right now. But what I really wanna be clear on is that this report demonstrates what we have long known and Democrats are fighting every day to confront pharmaceutical companies uh, continuing to put, who are putting profits over patients and are making billions of dollars at the expense of hardworking Americans. I've heard from too many families who have been forced to choose, as Peter said, between groceries and their prescriptions. These are choices that no one should have to make. Over a quarter of Americans who take prescription medications say that they or a family member have not filled a prescription or have cut pills in half or skipped doses or have taken over-the-counter medication instead simply because of the cost. And one of the stories I'll never forget was being at a town hall meeting and a mother who had three jobs still living below the poverty line and her child's inhaler cost her $8, $800 a month. The time, I know what it is because I take it too. It had, that was it. That was the only option that they had. And when I tried to get her help, and you went to the clinics that help people, they said to me, this is the hardest medicine for us to do. Think of parents, think of parents who are struggling and can't afford their children's asthma uh, medicine. It's why we passed the Inflation Reduction Act. It's not my favorite name of a bill, I keep saying to everybody, but it is helping reduce costs. It's a landmark piece of legislation that we're already seeing the impacts of and the cost savings for people across the country insulin now capped at $35. But unfortunately, as Peter and Leslie talked about, big pharma continues to do everything it can to repeal these reforms while American families still pay some of the highest prices in the world for the vital medicines that they need to stay healthy. And Peter talked about other countries. I'll tell you what, my actually part of my district is actually Canada, Canada is south of us. We can go across to Canada and get so many medicines so much cheaper than we pay in this country. Pharmaceutical companies, uh, I mean, they're trying to do everything they can to repeal uh, these reforms. Uh, from, they're working to undermine and to circumvent the cost-saving measures in an attempt to protect their bottom line. They file lawsuits to try to prevent Medicare from negotiating these drug prices which is one of the key provisions of the IRA that will lower prices for consumers by at least 25% for some of the highest cost prescription drugs that seniors rely on to treat conditions like cancer, diabetes, and autoimmune disorders. And we saw when insulin prices got lowered for seniors, it fouled for other diabetics across this country. This bill makes a difference. Americans spend more on prescription drugs than patients in any other country, any other country. Meanwhile, American taxpayers fund some of the most cut, cost cutting research in the world. That research, which is integral to drug companies' abilities to make the products in the first place. And they say they can't reduce prices because of that R&D. And yet American taxpayers are helping to pay for some of it too. That is why Senator Welch and I, along with our colleagues, Senator Merkley, have introduced another important piece of legislation last summer and Price Gouging for Medications Act. This bill would require the Secretary of HHS to ensure Americans do not pay more for prescription drugs than the lowest price per drug in 11 other countries that represent nations with similar economies. In each of these countries, pharmaceutical companies sell many of the same identical prescription drugs Americans take for a fraction of the cost that, that our rear pay charged here. So I promise you, I'm gonna to continue to fight to protect these important provisions in the IRA. Peter and I are gonna to work together with our colleagues to make sure we do that. And we have to keep fighting to find additional solutions to lower prescription drug costs in this country. If you're sick in this country and you need medicine, you should be able to get it. And you should, no matter who you are, have to worry 
about whether you can afford that antibiotic, whether you can afford that asthma, whether you can afford that medicine to bring your high blood pressure down. Thank you, Leslie, and I'll yield back. Thank you, and uh, um, we couldn't have a more formidable uh, duo of fighters, champions, and policymakers as we do on this call today, and the people of Vermont and the people of Michigan should realize how privileged they are to have a representation in Washington of this quality. We have a good number of press folks on uh, the call, including many uh, from your home states. Uh, uh, as they gather their thoughts and return to questions, I just want to say uh, uh, very briefly some closing remarks. Um, we haven't. We've talked about the you know what the pharmaceutical companies are up to and what um, these members of Congress and their colleagues are up to, but it's also important for us to point out the contrast between the agenda of the Biden administration and Democrats in Congress and the agenda of the Republican Party. They could not be more different. President Biden, Democrats in Congress passed the IRA. They lowered drug costs. They're bringing down the cost of health insurance, of insulin, of vaccines, and looking to expand that from, just, from people on Medicare to everyone with insurance. They, there have been phenomenal accomplishments, and, yet, and they are looking forward to taking those accomplishments and sharing them with all Americans, no matter where they get their insurance. On the other hand, the MAGA Republican Party, led by Donald Trump, wants to deny tens of millions of Americans affordable, life-saving health care. They voted against the Inflation Reduction Act, and they side with the big companies, including the big drug companies, over patients and their hardworking families. As we know, Donald Trump tried and failed to repeal the ACA in his first term, but is now pledged to do it again if he can. The Republican Study Committee re released a 2025 budget with disastrous policy proposals that would gut Medicare, Medicaid, and many other healthcare uh, um, provisions and programs that are vital to the American people. Together, their radical agenda is clear, slash Medicaid and Medicare funding, repeal protections for pre-existing conditions, repeal the Inflation Reduction Act and the Affordable Care Act, raise prescription drugs and premium costs, and strip away health care for millions of America. This is the reality of the choice in front of Americans, um, and it is the reality people must take very seriously. And with that, let me ask my colleague Maddie to uh, uh, tee up some of the questions from our uh, reporters on the line. Sure. Thank you, Leslie. Um, if you're a reporter on the line, you can let us know you have a question by clicking the raise hand button at the bottom of the screen. You can also chat us a question or email it to us. Um, so we're just going to give it a second to um, allow folks to raise their hands. And I know we had um, some questions emailed to us at the beginning, so we can start there. Um, uh, the first question is, um, how serious should Americans take the promises from Republicans to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act when you say how popular they are? Uh, they should take it deadly seriously. I mean, give Trump credit for one thing. Uh, he tells us what he's going to do. Uh, and and uh, there is an, an there's been enormous resistance uh, by the Republicans, and it, it mystifies me because the reality is that these high prices that <clears throat> Debbie and I are talking about they afflict you whether you live in a red state or a blue state. Uh, this is equal pain all across uh, the country for families uh, and for folks who need the medication, but. It's been a political doctrine here, uh, and it is mystifying, uh, by the Republicans to repeal the Affordable Care Act and to resist uh, to the very last vote uh, any kind of price negotiation or price relief. So it would be foolish uh, to disregard past uh, as prologue for what we could expect in a Trump administration. I totally agree with Peter, and I'm gonna make one other point. Now Republicans did not support capping insulin at $35. They go out and do press conferences and now say, isn't it great? They did not vote for it. They did not support it. Actions speak louder than words and their actions are documented. Yeah. Um, and as you said, this is, you know, if you do look at the polling, um, these provisions are popular no matter where people live, what political party they have precisely for 
uh, particularly what Peter said about how these affect families and what Representative Engel did. We all know that when you get sick, it takes over your life, and all of us have had those experiences. That's why this is the, you know, the, the bipartisan kitchen table issue everywhere in America, except in the House Republican and Senate cafeterias, I guess. Um, let's take one le one more question, and uh, uh, and then we'll let everybody get out on time. Maddie? Sure. The next question is, what is the status of the lawsuits against the Inflation Reduction Act? Maybe I should take that one, I guess. I, you know, so far, um, you know, there's been probably double digit lawsuits filed. One of the things that the industry has done, as you probably know, is that they are um, cherry picking and picking forums. So they find, you know, the sympathetic judge in the Fifth Circuit, start there and roll it on up. And as a matter of fact, it's one of the reasons why the judiciary in the U.S. is now, you know, trying to self-regulate self -regulate and say you just can't go to the place you know you're going to win. Um, but uh, so far, they've failed in, el in all of the court proceedings that they've uh, uh, attempted. Um, they've lost the arguments for a variety of reasons. They've argued that, um, you know, basically this is an unlawful taking, but the courts have said, well, look, no one's, you know, you can sell your drug to all these places. Um, no one's like, if you, you know, Walmart doesn't pay you a fair price, you choose not to sell it there, but it's not a taking and it's not a government taking. But so, so far, um, their cases have fallen on deaf ears, but there are many more to come. Uh, I think all of us are confident about the law, uh, but we're not confident necessarily about the judiciary. So we'll, uh, but you know, so far, uh, uh, those are not succeeding. Uh, do we have any final remarks from our Speakers? No, we just got to keep the fight up and Debbie and I will. Ah. Yeah. You have to put the human face on it. When people see the human faces and understand the struggle of so many working Americans, we just have to, we can't let, take our foot off the accelerator, so. And I can promise you, we will not either. Um, thank you both. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Bye-bye.